Hi, so in today's lecture, we are going to discuss something known as nano imprint lithography and one of its variants known as hot embossing. So as the name itself suggests, it's a lithographic technique and it is used for making something in the nano scale. Hmm. So why do we need yet another lithographic technique? So you know already that there are X-ray, there is X-ray lithography which can be used for making nanoscale structure. Photolithography, although it cannot be used for making nano uh, structures, but the advantage there is that you can use it as a batch fabrication technique. Huh? So uh, the lithographic techniques can also be serial. You remember the example of serial fabrication, serial lithographic fabrication is electron beam lithography. Hmm. And why X-ray lithography and photolithography can be batch fabrication techniques? Because on one mask, you can fit multiple structures. You can pattern multiple structures because typically your structures will be very small, maybe one centimeter by one centimeter or, or even smaller than that. So now you can fit 50, 100, whatever number of structure on top of one mask and then that is, you know, your one batch. So it's a batch fabrication technique. So there are advantages to each one of them. However, now we, what we want to do is we, we think of yet another technique which can pattern very large areas huh, in one go. So something similar to photolithography. But you can also convert it into a continuous, from batch to continuous fabrication technique, right? So from serial to batch to continuous fabrication technique. So how will you do that? If you remember now, in during all our lithographic techniques, what we are doing is we are modifying the properties of the resist in some way or the other. So in photolithography, you do it using the UV light, X-ray lithography using X-rays and so on. So you chemically change the properties of your resist which make it hard or soft or which make it soluble in a certain solvent, partially soluble, selectively soluble. What we can also do is we can control a certain property physically. Which property is that? Melting of a material. Hmm, that is something that is a physical change, not a chemical change in the material, but that we can easily control. We know that polymers have a certain property known as the glass transition temperature. Now, below this temperature, the polymer behaves like glass and above glass transition temperature, it's, it's softer. As we keep on increasing the temperature, then also at some point the melting or the flow of the chain start. But right above the glass transition temperature, you will have this rubbery state. So the material is softer. Now, what you can do, and this is what is done in nano imprint lithography in hot embossing, that you make sort of a stamp with your structures on top of it. Hmm. So you know the concept of stamp. You can write your name and print it on a paper. So similarly, you can write whatever structure you want to write. And then you have a film of polymer on top of silicon wafer after you can spin coat it. This is very similar to photolithography also. So let's say now you have a film of your polymer onto this uh, any substrate. And now you take the stamp and press it inside and at the same time you increase the temperature to slightly above the glass transition temperature of the material. So now your stamp will slowly go inside the material. Hmm. Of course, you also need to optimize the viscosity because if the material is very viscous, then maybe it will not go all the way inside your structure. Similarly, if your structures are too tall, also it will not work. But the advantage of this technique is that number one, you can pattern very large areas. So you can just, you can make a big stamp and you can, you just have a, a large film and you can coat on top of, uh, you can uh, pattern that film. So one very uh, important advantage is that you can do large area patterning and you can imagine that this is a very inexpensive technique and also the materials don't have to be too specialized. Like in the case of photosensitive materials, you need to have very special resist, then special, special um, developers for uh, which are only specific to that chemical. Now here you don't have these problems. You just heat the material and then you cool it down and then you remove your mold. In fact, you can use one mold multiple times. Hmm. So this is basically the, the fundamental principle of this technique. Okay, so here I've shown it also in this picture. So you will see this blue color thing is the mold or the stamp, whatever you want to call it. And then you have substrate and resist similar to other lithographic techniques. Then you press it inside, heat the, uh, heat the uh, substrate. So heat, basically you have to heat the resist film and then cool it down, remove the resist. One important thing is also that you will have a lot of or at least some resist left over on top of your surface. 
so where you don't want it as you can see in this image number three so where you don't want you may also have some residual resist so afterward what afterwards what you can do is you can remove this entire resist by doing plasma etching remember that when you do the plasma etching also the height of your structures will also go down a little bit because the plasma will also etch the material on top of from on top of the pillars but that's okay because you can accordingly fabricate your structures okay so um now i talked about this um hardening because the glass uh, the we reduce the temperature to below the glass transition of uh, of that polymer what we can also do in some cases there are certain resists that can be cross linked thermally hmm. so you remember uv cross linking so whenever you have a certain polymer that changes its properties how does it change its properties maybe there is a certain chemical reaction maybe there are certain bonds that are opening radicals are forming and then there is a new bond formation certain chemical reaction is happening that makes the material cross linked now there are also polymers which can be cross linked via heat so that is known as thermal cross linking so you can also take the polymers that can be uh, cross linked using the heat and there also you can perform this same technique okay so as i mentioned already large area patterns can be can be patterned but at the same time the aspect ratio of the structures may not be too high because then your resist may not go all the way in then the corners will not get filled hmm so also you should not have too many sharp corners in your structure hmm so the the designs have to be optimized if you have very tall structures then don't make them too sharp with corners otherwise you can make also sort of 3d kind of structures which are difficult to make using photolithography for example you can make a dome like structure hmm this hemi spherical structure which you which is difficult to make using photolithography so you can optimize the designs according to the fabrication technique however very tall structures very high aspect ratio structures are generally difficult to pattern using nano imprint lithography okay now the mold mold material so what is important is now once you have the material your your uh, polymer is hardened now you need to remove the mold okay so what are the properties then you the, uh, that you need in your mold material number one i mean all together we want it to easily come off right so number one the material of the mold itself should be inert and it should have very smooth walls hmm that should not get get stuck to your polymer so the material itself it should also not chemically react it should not have any surface functional groups that can attach to your polymer and it should also be able to withstand the high temperatures ha huh. so there are certain mold materials for example if you go to 400 degree or 500 degrees then in that case the mold material itself can um, react with your polymer so those things should not happen also some of the polymers may have certain solvents in them and when we heat this for the cross linking purposes maybe some solvents and gases will come out and then you might have tiny bubble formation so these things also need to be taken care of but okay first i was talking about just the mold removal so you need to also sometimes what you can do is you can make tapered side side walls so rather than just perfect um, you know cylindrical structures let's say you want to make pillars you can make them slightly tapered hmm so in that case the mold will come off easily okay so um how do you fabricate these molds because the mold itself making the mold is now tricky so now here you use other lithographic techniques now you can make a mold using electron beam lithography you can make a mold using x ray lithography so that will be your master mold you can use a very expensive technique to make your master mold afterwards you can use it for nano imprint lithography so you can also use liga techniques for example so after after making your structures you can then uh, also electroplate them with a metal then you have a metal mold so you can use other microfabrication nano fabrication techniques for making the master mold for nano imprint lithography okay so i already told you that we etch away the resist that is left over now why do we also call it hot embossing so this is actually a little bit uh, tricky also a little bit debated hot embossing was a technique which is pretty much the same technique but in the it was called hot embossing and it was reported before the nano imprint lithography came into picture nano imprint lithography is a sort of broader term you can also do nano imprint lithography with the uv exposure 
Hmm. So you can take a UV cross-linkable resistor, the one that you will use for photolithography. And what you can also do is you can shine light during when the, the stamp is inside the polymer. And that's how you cross-link the polymer. So nanoimprint lithography would also include that. While hot embossing is specifically when you're using the heat hmm, to make your structures to cross-link the polymer or you're playing with the glass transition temperature. In that case, you will call it hot embossing. Okay, now if you want to shine the UV light, you need to make sure that your substrate is uh, is transparent to the UV light because typically you will shine the light from the bottom because the mold itself is typically opaque. Okay, now also there can be some other variations of nano imprint lithography based on the design of the mold. So you can have plate to plate, what I have shown here from one to four, it's known as plate to plate because you have two plates. One is your substrate with the resist and the second, your mold is also like a plate, but you can also have something known as roll to plate. So your mold now or your stamp is like a roll, which will roll over your substrate. In that case, you have very large area patterning also. Hmm. Then you also have something, uh, th this is what I was mentioning in the beginning, that you can extend it to roll to roll also, where you have two rolls. Hmm. And in between you have your substrate. This can also be used then for flexible substrates, for example. And that is where you can also pattern the newspaper like patterning you can do. You can also go for continuous patterning of structures. Okay, now there are some other variations of, uh, of nano imprint lithography where you can use both UV light and the heat. You can use lasers. You can also uh, have electric field assisted uh, uh, nano imprint lithography, reverse nano imprint lithography, and so on. So you get the basic idea of this um, of this technology. And now, of course, you can vary a lot of parameters, and then you can come up with your own version of nano imprint lithography. Okay. Now, what are the parameters that we optimize? Of course the thermal expansion of the polymers or any material. By the way, you can also use hot embossing technique or the heated version that also for metals. Hmm. So you can, for example, low temperature melting metals like aluminum. Hmm. It uh, melts around 600 degrees. So what you can do is also you can melt aluminum and then you have a stamp and then you have to, then you can uh, co cool, it, cool it down again. But what you need to ensure is that your your uh, mold itself or your stamp itself should be it can withstand that temperature can withstand such high temperatures also it does not uh, make an alloy with aluminum for example mm, so it does not react anyway so thermal expansion of the materials is one parameter of course that you need to optimize or ensure that uh, that does not affect your designs you also need to make sure that the bubbles that uh, or solvents any kind of uh, gases that are being released do not affect your structures Resist viscosity is very important. If the resist is too, too thick, your stamp will not go all the way inside. And also, of course, all kind of damage that happens after the removal of the mold, the damage to the mold and damage to the structures, these are the things that you need to take care of. Okay.